What's up, guys? It is December 14th, 1140 a.m., and this is the Crypto Newsletter, and we're going to do a wrap-up recap of a lot of news. We're just going to power through it. We got to catch up on the news. Uh, a lot of stuff's been going on. Some old stuff that we're going to revisit and some new stuff. So 71% of high net worth individuals have invested in digital assets, and that's no surprise. A new survey suggests that most of the world's wealthiest have invested in digital assets and wealth management firms have been advised to prioritize providing education and advice. And it, it's unfair because the they're provi- they're prioritizing providing that education and advice to the wealthiest people in the world, the high net worth individuals, wealth management firms. So that's why here at Stargate, we're trying to level the playing field as far as providing that education and not so uh, much of advice, but education and things that we're doing that you could follow along with. And so that's what we're doing here at Stargate. So high net worth individuals have embraced cryptocurrencies and other digital assets with 71% of wealthy individuals investing in digital assets according to a new survey. So there we go. Now let's go to the next one. We have eight states file enforcement actions against crypto lending platform Nexo. And then Nexo had said that they are leaving the United States and that due to lack of regulatory clarity. So when they're deciding to do that, that remains to be unseen. But the lack of regulatory clarity in the United States is driving these crypto businesses to to different locations and they're just pulling out entirely. So unless there's some regulatory clarity, we're going to continue to see that. So I would say if you have stuff in Nexo as a U.S. citizen, you should probably withdraw it because who knows how this will play out. Now we got Goldman Sachs seeks to impose order on expanding crypto universe with classification system. Remember, Goldman Sachs has poured tens of millions of dollars into the space most recently after the FTX um, collapse. And they're, they're basically building the standard for classifying the different segments in crypto. And the new service is called Data, Dataonomy, a play on the word taxonomy, which is the branch of science concerned with naming and classifying the natural world and can be accessed as a subscription-based data feed or through Marquee, which is Goldman Sachs' digital storefront for institutional investors. We might have to plug into this or get some APIs to draw off it because this is huge. It's classifying the different segments of crypto. So users can tap the data feed to help with analysis and research, as well as benchmarking performance, managing portfolios, or creating investment products based on sectors. So it's funny because here at Stargate, we're talking about building a a sector, Stargate sector detector. And what that's going to do is we'll be able to analyze each and every sector. So now I, I know how we're going to do it. But we're, we're going to be able to analyze the decentralized finance sector, the metaverse sector, smart contract platform sector, value transfer coin sector, and we'll be able to gauge ahead of time which sector is outperforming. Because just like the stock market, you see sector rotations. And I wouldn't, you know, we see that in crypto as well, too. We saw it last year with the metaverse sector run and then gaming and then the meme sector run. So, here at Stargate, we're going to build the Stargate sector detector, and we're going to be able to analyze ahead of time which sector is likely to outperform, and we'll we'll just get better insights with that, and we can ride that wave. And then when the next sector starts to show some signs of really picking up some steam, then we'll be able to transfer some of our coins into that sector. So this is going to be huge for uh, for the overall adoption, mainstream adoption, and tying crypto into the traditional system, as well as I'm going to get a subscription to this data on me and we're going to be able to draw from their, the, the institutional data feeds and be able to analyze the sectors of cryptos in which are going to outperform. So this is huge. Goldman Sachs is making a bid to standardize the way financial industry talks about tracks and invests in the burgeoning universe of digital assets. The investment bank is set to unveil a data service created with global index provider and crypto data firm that seeks to classify hundreds of digital coins and tokens so institutional investors can make sense of the new asset class. And it's going to be a good tell to us as well, too, the hundreds of tokens that they put in this basket of the sectors is likely the ones that are going to be able 
the ones that are going to be a part of the mainstream traditional uh, markets. So anything that is not included in this, we can likely say that, all right, that coin is going to go to zero. So that's going to be another thing that we can draw from this. But the digital asset ecosystem has really expanded over the last couple of years. We're trying to create a framework for the digital asset ecosystem that our clients can understand because they increasingly need to think about performance tracking and risk management and digital assets. There we go. And then we can even dive into it because it, it lays it out for us. A standardized view of the digital assets market designed to provide a consistent, standardized way to help market participants view and analyze the digital assets ecosystem, creating an increased level of transparency into the how the market is moving. Digital currencies, right? This is the class. Digital currencies, then the sector, value transfer coins, specialized coins, and then they have subsectors. So digital currencies, value transfer coins, value transfer coins, specialized coins, meme coins, privacy coins, remittance coins. To me... XRP, XLM are value transfer coins or remittance coins, and that is classified as a digital currency, not a digital security, right? Then we have blockchain infrastructure, smart contract platforms, blockchain utilities, network scaling, cross-chain interoperability, blockchain network. So if I were to label Flare, I would say it is a blockchain infrastructure. It is a blockchain utility, which is a crop cross-chain interoperability as well as a smart contract platform so it's there could be mixes of both application utilities and oracle yeah and then then they have their own even tie-in of an oracle the ftso so they're like in companies and cup encompassing all of the blockchain infrastructure sectors then digital asset applications, DeFi, intermediated finance, business services, IT, metaverse, media services. And then you have on-chain derivatives, stable coins, tokenized assets, claim tokens. It's truly um, going to be huge. And this is great that we have, we're going to get access to this because, boy, is this going to put us way ahead of the game. We're going to be tied up with the big boys once we get this um, involved with and tied in with Stargate. So huge stuff ahead going into 2023, that's for sure. Now let's go to this right here. So yeah, okay, same thing, same thing there. And then we had already gone through the, the 2022 cross-border payments 100, the world's top 100 cross-border payment companies in 2022. And we saw in here the type of companies. So they had traditional companies like, I swear I just saw like PayPal and Stripe, but for crypto and DLT, we have Circle, so USD coin, Ripple and Stellar. That's it, man. Like there's no Dogecoin on here. There's no, um, you know, like Ripple and Stellar really have gotten the nod of approval from the traditional institutions as far as, yeah, they, they got the AOK -okay to be able to offer these DLT slash crypto solutions to all of these companies. I, like Ripple and Stellar are providing a lot of things infrastructure solutions, blockchain infrastructure solutions to these companies. You have Flutter, Wave and Air, Stripe, Ant Group, FIS, MasterCard, Visa, PayPal. So like we've seen so many documents of, and let's go to banks like Santander, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Barclays, Dutch Bank, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, JP Morgan, Royal Bank, Canada, PNC, American Express. So like even just naming off a lot of these, Ripple is partnered in providing solutions for these companies. So if I were to um, say Crypto DLT, Ripple Stellar Circle, they're going to provide the solutions and the uh, infrastructure to a lot of these companies here. So Crypto DLT is going to be big. Now let's go to this right here. So what are the benefits of a wholesale CBDC? Remember that the New York Fed is doing like a... 12 week trial for the wholesale CBDC. Foreign exchange transactions could drop from a two day process to less than 10 seconds if CBDCs were involved. That's just such a huge, like time is money, right? So dropping a process from two days to 10 seconds is just huge for the productivity of the economy, as well as saving on the fees and kind of like the costs associated with that two day process. You know, you have to pay much more in fees and compliance and stuff rather than utilizing a wholesale CBDC, which does it automatically in 10 seconds for a pennyth of a fee. It's really insane. So yeah, the, the New York Fed simulated foreign exchange transactions using a DL, distributed ledger to test for improvements over the current system and it's Project Cedar. So remember that came out like a couple months ago. 
Then Canada has shown up late to the crypto party. The federal government is launching a consultation on digital currencies, including a legislative review addressing financial stability and security and other digitalization. Canada announces crypto stablecoin consultation and new budget statement. Let's take a look. So federal government plans to examine crypto, which is said is transforming financial systems around the world. It is. It really is. The current system and how it's set up, the financial system, the plumbing, it sucks. And that's what we teach in our accelerator course on Stargate-Ventures.com. If you haven't already, I'll put that link in the bio so you can get free access because starting uh, January 1st, we're not going to provide the accelerator anymore. But uh, yeah, like we we talk about this in all our course programs on the website. We walk you through the current system and how it's set up, why it sucks and what needs to change. And then we walk you through the future system and how it's coming sooner than you think and how the new plumbing is going to be in blockchain and distributed ledger technology is going to be the backbone and the core infrastructure to enable a transformation in the financial systems where all the money can move through. It's the greatest opportunity of all time. And it's just, it's truly unreal that we're living in it. So there we go. Digitalization of money, which highlighted cryptocurrencies and digital assets and their use worldwide. Cryptocurrencies are transforming financial systems. The digitalization of money poses challenges to democratic institutions around the world. In the last several months, digital assets and cryptocurrencies have been used to avoid global sanctions and fund illegal activities, both in Canada and around the world. To address this, the government launched a consultation on digital currencies on Thursday. The document said this includes a legislative review addressing financial stability and security, as well as other digitalization. There we go. So let's keep going. Then we got Needham and Co. Vice President John Tadaro discusses whether USDC could become the de facto CBDC for the U.S. and why Coinbase would, could operate like a traditional finance company if it were to mint more of the token. I believe that USDC, there's a high chance for it to become the the de facto CBDC, maybe the retail CBDC, because USDC is getting tied up with BlackRock and BlackRock in the US and uh, yeah, BlackRock and USDC and the Federal Reserve have like the circle USDC reserves fund that they just launched and they're going to be utilizing that fund for the repo market, for the Federal Reserve repo market. So you can already see USDC getting interwined with the current system. And Coinbase is like the biggest advocate for USDC over Tether, as we saw the other day with that news, them kind of insinuating to convert into USDC from Tether. Now let's keep going. Strategies to navigate the $68 trillion great wealth transfer, according to top rank advisors. So let's watch this video. In the space of just $68 trillion are about to change hands in the U.S. Baby boomers are the wealthiest generation in American history, and they're about to pass down those riches over the next few decades. It's the so-called great wealth transfer. But here's the hitch. That transfer might not be so great if the right estate planning steps aren't taken. Step one, make sure that inheritance you're poised to bequeath remains intact. The cost of long-term care can wipe out an entire estate in the space of just a few years. The premiums can be hefty, but some financial advisors say long-term care insurance is worth it. And nothing is certain except death and taxes. Most estates are not subject to federal estate tax because the bar for exemption is pretty high. But watch out for state tax. Some have much lower estate tax thresholds. Now, let's say you want to put some conditions on how your inheritance is spent. Try a trust. You can set an exact time when assets pass on to your beneficiaries or how it should be spent. Another huge plus, trusts can minimize estate taxes and keep your estate out of probate court. Keep in mind that probate court process can prove to be both time consuming and expensive, which ultimately just chips away at your estate. Another way to avoid it, supplement the will with something called a living trust. It will hold your assets while you're still alive and then transfer it over to your beneficiaries after you die. Plus, avoiding probate means it's a private transaction. Probate is public, which means everyone knows your business. So take care with that legacy planning now, and your heirs will be well in the black later on. There we go. So maybe I should try to find somebody as far as like estate planning, stuff like that. Maybe have a mom do a Zoom call, give a little bit of some insight on how we can go about that. I think that would be big. So... I will definitely set that up. Then we got this. 
So SWIFT, the CBDC landscape could become fragmented globally. Today, the global CBDC ecosystem risks becoming fragmented with numerous central banks developing digital currencies based on different technologies, standards, and protocols. If left unaddressed, the fragmentation could lead to digital islands or walled gardens springing up across the globe. Consequently, developing a way for transactions to flow between different CBDCs, constructs, and platforms will be critical. A bilateral solution between two countries would work, but such a system would not be scalable and would be unmanageable if applied globally. A multilateral interoperability mechanism is therefore needed to connect up CBDC networks and existing payment systems globally and thus enable CBDC track transactions to flow across borders in a seamless and frictionless way. A global interlinking solution is feasible. I mean, right there, it's spelling out what Interledger, RippleNet, and the wholesale CBDCs are, and the ultimate goal of what XRP is supposed to become, the holy grail of cross-border payments. And I'm going to do a follow-up video to the one I did before. If you haven't already seen that one, you got to see the holy grail of cross-border payments. Huge. But yeah, this is shaping up. The narrative is being shaped up. We know what we hold. I mean, it, it's spelling it out here without saying it. It's like, if you know, you know, and we know. All right, now we got this. In cross-border payments, the disrupted have become the disruptors. This is December 9th, like what, five days ago? Fintechs turned a cross-border payments into a hotbed. Fintechs turned cross-border payments into a hotbed of innovation over the last five years. Now the card networks and banks are responding with disruptions of their own. It's not just a competitive threat from fintechs developing faster, cheaper, more transparent cross-border payment options. The changing economy is now adding urgency for legacy cross-border providers to modernize their services. The overall cost of using correspondent banking model, which remains the status quo for bank-initiated cr cross-border payments, is increasing as interest rates climbs and the expense and complexity of regular regulatory compliance rises. I can't read through it. Well, I'm going to sign up because we can at least get one free article. All right, we're in. We are in. So one aspect of correspondent banking requires institutions to keep pools of funds sitting in other bank accounts to fund cross-border transfers. And with rising interest rates, that starts to get expensive. New approaches to cross-border payments ranges from the New York's Fed research around pairing blockchain technology with the CBDC and CBDC tests in the U.S. to Visa and MasterCard working with multiple fintechs and banks to harness card rails for streamlined cross-border payments for consumers and businesses. As SWIFT prepares to turn 50 next year, the Belgium-based SWIFT has brought SWIFT Go, the new faster version of its cross-border payment system, to five dozen banks that will be using it by the end of the, this year. SWIFT is also participating in an upcoming pilot for instant international transfers. Fintechs are still the driving force of innovation in the $23 trillion global cross-border payments market, but this explosive growth is creating opportunities for more players. According to MasterCard, the pandemic accelerated the growth of cross-border payments, and it's putting digital remittances on track to grow by 80% by 2025. Making waves Ripple Labs has been a catalyst and continues to develop methods for fast, transparent, blockchain-powered cross-border transactions while still embroiled in a lawsuit with the SEC filed in 2020, alleging it violated federal securities laws with the sale of its XRP token. Despite the cloud hanging over Ripple and how it handles XRP and the recent blow-up of crypto exchange FTX, crypto-powered payments, especially CBDCs and well-collateralized stablecoins remain an area to watch. You wouldn't be seeing a lot of this recent progress from SWIFT or other organizations if Ripple hadn't provided competition to the existing players and processes. SWIFT is working with Paris-based EBA Clearing and the US-based The Clearinghouse to launch the first live real transaction via intermediate cross-border payments early next year. Early next year, 2023. The, pilots, the pilot follows last year's proof of concept and aims to go mainstream by the fourth quarter of 2023. 2023 is our year. Various international banks along with EBA and TCH are in the final stages of developing the pilot's technology and legal agreements. The, the internet... I'm sorry, that immediate cross-border payments pilot potentially helps to solve issues where the correspondent banking model doesn't work as effectively, providing another option in banks' toolkits. Swift Go, launched last year for international payments under 10K, is now live with 34 banks. Another six will be active by the end of this year, and hundreds more have begun on the onboarding process, Swift said. Swift Go offers a low-cost, faster way for businesses and consumers to send cross-border payments, leveraging Swift's global payments innovation, which it developed over the last five years. See, the problem with Swift Go 
and Switch API is that it it does the instant messaging. So like it will say, all right, like an instantly like, all right, money's taken out of your account, but it doesn't do the instant settlement. And that's where RippleNet comes in. It does the settlement and the payment messaging at the same time. Whereas Swift Go and Swift GPI doesn't do the settlement at the same time. It still might take even 10 minutes or like a, a full day. Whereas using RippleNet, it, it's in three seconds to, to the beat. So Royal Bank of Canada last month was the first bank in Canada to introduce Swift Go through a collaboration with JP Morgan. Swift Go will make it easier for Canadian companies to plan their cl- cash flow, forecast liquidity positions, and do business globally. Recently, Swift also improved basic wire transfers with new tools, including payment pre-validation to spot errors before initiating a transaction, case management to streamline resolution of exceptions and payments that require investigation, along with payment controls, which provide fast and efficient fraud detection. Now, if we just keep going down here, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York recently released uh, research suggesting that using CBDC paired with blockchain technology would likely make cross-border payments faster and more efficient. A wholesale CBDC the New York Fed hopes to test could be used to clear and settle payments between banks, government agencies, and other organizations. The New York Fed also announced last month that it's working with the Monetary Authority of Singapore in a joint experiment to explore how wholesale CBDCs could streamline cross-border wholesale payments that involve multiple currencies. Cross-border payment users demanding improvements have prompted other innovations. London-based cross border transfer company wise recently teamed up with data aggregate aggregator plaid to enable us co- consumers to link wise's multi-currency account to any bank account wise app users can now initiate international bank international transfers in near real time cutting out many steps if we keep going down here it talks about finastra which has a ripple net plugin There are many individual solutions for cross-border payments, but we want to be a hub offering a diverse range of options for each payment scenario. The payment card networks will need to work closely with many financial institutions and fintechs to win a significant share of cross-border payment volume. It is a natural fit to use the existing card rails that are trusted, secure, and fast for cross-border payments. Both networks have been trying to crack this opportunity for years, and while they gain traction, they're a long way off from succeeding. For example, blockchain platforms might serve emerging economies while card networks would be more suitable for international transfers where debit information is known. A traditional wire transfer could still make the most sense for a bank with direct relationships. Innovation and cross-border payments must go in many directions. And that's what we're seeing. So huge news there outlining ripple and we see the writing on the wall so that's going to be it for this newsletter i will see you guys in the next video where we'll be doing a deep dive and if you haven't already come join the discord we're running a special right now it's the 12 days till christmas special once you join the discord the link will be in the bio you'll see the launch pad here and you'll want to click this me six link right here and it'll bring you to the membership page to get access to the automated crypto signals. If you don't want the automated signals, then you don't have to worry about it. We do have, if you join the Discord, you do get um, some free channels in there with, with valuable content. But if you want the automated signals, we're doing a special that we haven't done before, a 12 days Christmas special. If you see this, when you pull this up, then take action on it because we're only doing a limited amount of spots. So it could we could take it down before Christmas comes. So if you see it, sign up for it and take advantage of all these automated signals in here. We have all these exotic signals down to all these individual crypto signals, as well as stocks and gold, silver, and bond yields, the dollar as well too. So looking forward to seeing you guys join the Discord. When you get in there, say what up. I will say what up too, and I'll see you in the next video.